we really still remember the, the time when we started talking about Mass Effect. It was after, after we'd done Knights of the Old Republic and after, you know, that was such a, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was such a tremendous success and, you know, there was a lot of passion that went into that game and a lot of really great ideas and, and we were sitting, Ray and I were actually chatting a lot with Casey in those days and, you know, we, we, we were sort of thinking about, okay, what, what's next? What's, what, what's the next thing to tackle? And I think what we really wanted to do was to, to blow it out, you know, to really make it big and broad and, you know, that's, that's kind of the whole where this whole concept of exploring the galaxy and, you know, having a really giant story um, and we wanted to do something of our own I think that was the other thing that really came out and it was funny we were at this you know I think the fir one of the first meetings was at this Greek restaurant by our old office I still remember us talking about it and like throwing the ideas around so it was a really you know it's always exciting when the game is starting because it's pretty uh, pretty general but there's usually some really neat ideas that still for this very day have, have kind of lived through all that time or in, in the game itself a lot of the inspiration for Mass Effect come, came from the idea that um, I think in a lot of the science fiction that we're seeing today in movies or, or games is is a lot of a lot of it is really dark and gritty and you know you'll have lots of rusted metal and dark shadows and things like that and that stuff is really cool um, but we also wanted to do something different and when we thought about what you know what's different from from those things that are being done. Um, one of the things that came to mind is for, for myself and the art director, Derek Watts, there is kind of an entire genre of art, like kind of futurist art, that was especially done in the early 80s and late 70s, um, where things are just, they're just extra sleek, they kind of have a graphic design sense or even like a, an aerospace design sense to them. They look like they're drawn with a compass and a ruler and you get these very functional but very sleek looking designs. And um, so that was, that was something that we wanted to impart to Mass Effect. At the beginning, Casey and I really sat down, talked a lot about, about what kind of movies we liked, what kind of uh, artists we liked. Uh, Sid Mead popped up, some of the other movies uh, we liked were Solaris, Night Clean Style and that, uh, uh, Red Planet, a lot of the other Hollywood things uh, like that. Uh, we had just come off a Star Wars game, so we had to kind of get our minds off uh, that kind of look, like the Imperial look, the uh, Republic look and we had to go in a totally new direction for that. That was a bit difficult, uh, so we uh, looked at a lot of the uh, old NASA paintings of what uh, the future might look like, uh, some of the old uh, ships of what might it look like to go in outer space, some of the ring worlds they had done and so on. Uh, structures, we looked at a lot of uh, modern architecture magazines, maybe just took them to an extreme scale, but we definitely had the same vision that we uh, wanted on this and that was um, a clean look, nice and sleek, something that wasn't too clunky, something that could actually work and uh, people would feel comfortable with uh, driving around in, walking through or being a part of. So there was a year of nothing but, you know, what is our IP, what are we trying to make here? Um, going back and saying, well, what kind of a science fiction game do we want to make? We decided right away that we're going to go to a real-time combat system, but really focus on making sure that the RPG aspects of that combat were still there, meaning as I progress through the game, I'm getting better, I'm, I'm able to upgrade my character, my gameplay is evolving as I move through the game, but it's all done in real time. One of the big problems on KOTOR is melee and the, you know, the, the sort of blaster weapons were always fighting, like we, we couldn't resolve the balance on those issues very well, so we, we made the decision, we're going to use ranged weapons for this game, and actually that decision has made it much easier to design and, and it's made it more fun, because all the, everything going into it with the tech powers, the biotic powers, the, the, the uh, you know, mass accelerator weapons, all those things are ranged so that everything, you know, sort of builds off that philosophy. The interactive conversation system, the biggest thing we were trying to go for in this game, basically we do have like a real-time conversation and that's really the key is that it's a real-time conversation that you're inputting into and in certain circumstances the end result of that is digital acting like we saw at E3 where you grab someone or you pull a gun. So you'll see like that payoff when you do like the traditional bio or intimidate and charm. Well when you intimidate somebody in this game, the payoff will be you know, something physical as well as something verbal. Just like KOTOR, we wanted to say we want science fiction moments that you'll you'll recognize, but they're they're redone in such a way that they're new. That was sort of the challenge for the first year is, is making sure that the framework was in place. We didn't even worry about the story so much. We worried about what is the framework that where we can tell a good science fiction story 
And after we're done telling this story, we have a lot more stories we can tell. The, the big thing that we want to try to do is, is, is give the, the feeling of an epic 80s sci-fi. So the music really has to reflect that. And what, the, what we found in the 80s, the, the, the soundtracks we liked best were things like Tangerine Dream, Vangelis Blade Runner, you know, the, the Jerry Goldsmith on Aliens. So what we're trying to do is make a combination of that stuff. You know, the, the Goldsmith orchestral, the mild stuff, mixed with uh, the eclectic electronica, but very, sub, you know, very serene and very, uh, you know, a lot of ambience in the music. Right now we're blurring the lines between what's a sound effect and what's music, because the, the music itself is quite the, the sound effect. So it's got, uh, you know, if you listen to a, a movie like Blade Runner, the, the, uh, the music in it is all part of the world too, and it just all blends together and it just, yeah, it just, makes the whole, you know, the whole audio package complete. I was lucky enough to have played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid. Um, I was, you know, the, the stereotypical geek in his basement with his friends, um, which gave me a real understanding of role-playing games and uh, how the experience of role-playing takes place, how to tell a story while you are allowing people to make choices and go along the way, um, changing things. It's not a, not a linear style of storytelling. Um, that's very much what we do here at Bioware. So that kind of gave me the grounding and the understanding of our, our story structure. So in terms of inspiration, I think, as Greg described, we've, we've had a, a desire for a long time to make a, a, new, a new IP at Bioware that's going to really excite the fans in a, in a science fiction environment. And so th this, is, this is that IP. Mass Effect is, is what we've been striving for. And I think what we're trying to do in terms of the emotion in the play we're trying to convey is this, we're trying to make players feel inspired, the new generation of video game players, the new generation of people who enjoy role-playing games or story-based games. We're trying to inspire them the same way that we were inspired back in the late 70s, early 80s, mid 90s when we played RPGs, just as ourselves. We're big, we're big fans of these games ourselves, so that, I think it's our dream ultimately to create that kind of same feeling and instill that emotion and inspire a new generation of video game players. I think it just revealed how old we actually are. <laughs>